From the dark depths of the oceans to the sunny heights of the mountains, myriad life abounds on planet Earth. Spiders weave their webs in a redwood forest, birds nest in a desert cactus, and fish dodge their way around a sea of kelp. As you watch this program, think about the natural environment in which you live and the types of plants and animals that live there. Try to identify your area by the community of plants and animals that surround you. This community of life is what scientists call a biome. As early travelers explored our planet Earth and cataloged its life, they discovered many species of plants and animals, but only a few basic types of geographical areas. Those geographical areas filled with a major community of plants and animals are known as biomes, or major life zones. Terrestrial biomes, those that are found on land, are most often classified by their dominant plant life. The biomes found in water, known as aquatic biomes, are usually named by their physical features. Each biome is characterized by a particular type of climate, vegetation, and animal life, and extends over a large region of the Earth's surface. Let's first explore the major land biomes. Tropical Rainforest Around the equator lies the biome known for its abundance and variety of life, the tropical rainforest. The name tropical rainforest aptly describes its place in the world, the tropics. It receives very high levels of rainfall, and its dominant life forms are trees. The annual rainfall actually varies from 100 to 160 inches, or 250 to 400 centimeters and the temperatures average from 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 to 32 degrees Celsius. Here, there are no freezing temperatures and no seasons. The trees are tall with slender trunks that branch only near the top, called the canopy. The average tree height exceeds 100 feet or 30 meters. These forests contain thousands of different tree species whose broad evergreen leaves block out much of the sunlight to the forest floor. The soil here is often thin and deficient of nutrients. This is due to the surrounding life's ability to efficiently absorb the forest's decomposed organic matter. Since most of the plant food is high up in the forest's canopy, most of the large diversity of animal life lives there as well. From above come the chatter of monkeys and the calls of many species of colorful birds and frogs. Here, reptiles, mammals, and a huge variety of insects abound and participate in the fierce competition for nutrients within the warm, misty green of the tropical rainforests. Deserts as we followed the climatic pattern 15 to 30 degrees latitude north or south of the equator, we discovered several regions that receive less than 10 inches or 25 centimeters of precipitation a year. These dry areas, which are found on every continent, are called desert biomes. The name desert comes from the Latin word desertus, which means abandoned, forsaken, left, or lying waste. The landscape often supports little life of any kind, and the terrain is dominated by rocks, sand, and overall poor soil. Plant life varies considerably because of the great variety of desert conditions. Areas that receive more than an inch, or two centimeters a year, of rainfall have highly specialized plants. Some of these plants are annuals, plants that complete most of the life cycle in less than a year. These plants grow, bloom, and set seed in a few days when water is available. Most desert plants are perennials, plants that live for more than a year. 
They are small woody shrubs or succulents, like this American cactus. These plants have large shallow root systems that are able to quickly soak up water from the infrequent desert rainstorms. Many animals have also adapted to these dry regions. Birds, snakes, tortoises, and many small rodents survive well with little water. Larger mammals also live in the desert, such as the desert bighorn sheep, which depend on water holes for their survival. Numerous desert animals are active during the night, while during the day, many of desert animals burrow underground, all wisely avoiding the fiery heat of the hot, dry biome called the desert. Temperate Deciduous Forest As we continue north-south away from the equator, at about 60 degrees latitude, we are able to observe cool moist air that rises and then soon returns to earth as rain or snow. Here the climate exhibits cold winters, warm summers, and abundant rainfall that is distributed throughout the year. The biome that experiences this climate is the temperate deciduous forest biome. It gets its name because typically the temperatures are moderate or temperate and the dominant life forms are trees which lose their leaves, known as deciduous trees. Typically, deciduous trees, such as beech, oak, maple, and hickory, grow during the spring and summer, lose their leaves during autumn, and lie dormant during the winter. Since during the winter most water is locked in the cold, frozen ground, the trees must lose their leaves to prevent water loss through the process of transpiration. Bacteria, earthworms, and fungi aid in the breaking down or decomposition of the abundant leaf litter and together contribute to the soil's rich nutrients. The forest's leafy limbs provide shelter, nuts, and seeds to a variety of bird species. Mammals such as deer, fox, squirrels, and raccoons also live here in the nutrient-rich North American temperate deciduous forest. Grasslands. The temperate grassland area where precipitation is too sparse to support tree growth but does not fall below 10 inches or 25 centimeters per year is called the grassland biome. This area is also known as prairie in North America, steppe in Russia and Asia, pampas in South America, and vet in South Africa. It is believed that grasslands may have covered nearly half of the world at one time. Due to the slow decomposition rate of the grasses over thousands of years, grassland biomes are considered to have the most fertile and deepest topsoil in the world. Today, most of the grasslands are used for agriculture and produce much of the world's domesticated grasses, such as wheat. This is why these grasslands are referred to as the breadbaskets of the world. The original grasslands of North America were once grazed by large herds of bison. Today, the parts of the prairies of the central United States are grazed by cattle, horses, and sheep. Living on the underdeveloped grasslands are animals such as the pronghorn antelope, coyotes, ground squirrels, and rattlesnakes. There are also a few of the warm regions of the world where the grassland biome receives 40 to 60 inches or 100 to 150 centimeters of rain. This life zone is often referred to as the savanna biome. The scattered trees of the African savanna are acacias, baobab trees, euphorbias, and palms. The giraffe, with its long neck, has evolved to feed on these tall trees and thereby does not compete with the grazing animals such as the antelope, wildebeests, and zebras. The predators, such as lions, cheetahs, and hyenas, help maintain the balance of life during the short, wet, and long, dry seasons of the savanna grassland biome. Chaparral. Chaparral is part of 
the temperate shrubland biome, best represented by short woody plants with simple evergreen thick leaves. The name chaparral refers to the evergreen oak called the Spanish chaparral. The thick, hard, waxy leaves of these shrubs are drought resistant and adapt well to the dry climate. Here, the winters are cool and rainy, and the summers are hot with very little or no rain. During the winter, precipitation is great enough that it leaches the soil of much of its nutrients. Similar plant communities are found in southwestern North America. Chile, the Mediterranean coast, southern Australia, and the southern tip of Africa. The chaparral ecosystem is found well developed near the coastal areas of the state of California in the United States. The leaves of these plants, such as this sage and manzanita, are often found to be aromatic with flammable compounds. Fires here are frequent. In some plant species, fires stimulate seed germination. After the fires, the dominant shrubs regrow from surviving plant tissue found near the ground. Throughout the year, lizards, chipmunks, and great horned owls are found within this volatile temperate shrubland biome known as the chaparral. Temperate Rainforest also in the state of California, along the cool, moist northern regions of its Pacific coast, are the world-famous giant redwoods. These majestic trees are part of the temperate rainforest biome. This climate here receives between 150 and 200 inches, or 380 and 500 centimeters, of rain annually, and the temperatures rarely drop to below freezing. With so much rainfall, along with moderate temperatures, this forest biome is appropriately named. The temperate rainforest biome is located on the northwest Pacific coast of North America and the southwestern tip of South America. This forest resembles tropical rainforests in that it contains very tall trees. Yet, unlike the tropical rainforest, the temperate rainforests are cooler and have fewer species of trees. Most of the species of trees are conifers, which means cone-bearing trees, such as redwood, spruce, fir, pine, and hemlock. Conifers thrive here better than broadleaf trees because the forest is located at higher latitudes along foggy coastlines where sunlight energy is often scarce. The needle branches do let in some sunlight for the forest floor, which supports plants such as mosses, ferns, and various forms of lichen. Supplying the acidic soil with some nutrients are the fungi, which often contribute to the decomposition process of the moist, decaying vegetation. Animals such as deer, salmon, and arachnids are also inhabitants here in the cool, damp biome of the temperate rainforest. Taiga. Moving more north in latitude and climbing higher among the mountains is the community called the taiga, or Northern Coniferous Forest. The word taiga is a Siberian word meaning primeval forest. The dominant trees of the forest biome are conifers such as spruce, pine, fir, larch, and balsam. The climate is generally long, old winters, allowing only a short growing season in the summer. The winters are colder, and the precipitation is much less than the temperate rainforest. With much of the precipitation falling as snow, conifers have successfully adapted to the winter's freezing temperatures. All evergreens have the ability to maintain the flow of water and nutrients within their trunks and branches throughout the year. This significant characteristic allows these trees to keep their needle-like leaves and continue the process of photosynthesis. Because of their small surface area and their waxy coating, these needle-like leaves are specialized to prevent water loss through transpiration. This is valuable to the tree's winter survival since the water outside the tree is unavailable due to the water's frozen state as ice or snow. 
Overall, these trees have adapted well to soil that is often very cold or very dry. Some of the animals found in these forests are caribou, deer, and elk, along with their predators, the mountain lions and timber wolves. Black bears, chipmunks, and beavers also reside in the cold evergreen world of the taiga biome. Tundra. During the warmer summer months, the caribou and bighorn sheep migrate north to the treeless biome known as the tundra. The name tundra is of Lap or Russian origin and means treeless plains of northern regions. The summer landscape south of the Arctic Circle is characterized by low dwarf grasses and sedges arranged in a mosaic multi-shaped pattern. For a few weeks during the summer, the day's light lasts for nearly 24 hours. But for most of the year, dark nights are long and the climate is extremely cold and dry. The landscape is often blanketed in white for most of the winter. The annual precipitation rarely exceeds 10 inches or 25 centimeters. In many parts of the tundra, the constant low temperatures freeze the deeper layers of the ground permanently. The low temperatures also slow down the decomposition of organic matter, allowing only a thin layer of soil. Because of the short growing season and the shallow layer of thawed ground, there are no trees. When the snow melts, the water collects on the surface, forming many lakes since the water is unable to be absorbed by the deeper layers of frozen soil. Large number of migratory birds also visit the marshy area in the summer. The Arctic hare, fox, and owl, as well as lemmings, remain active throughout the year. Tundra biomes are also found at lower latitudes in mountaintops above the timberline. During the summer, plant and animal communities of the alpine tundra experience intense sunshine, prevalent winds, and highly variable precipitation. For the rest of the year, precipitation is mainly snow, a common occurrence here in the cold, dry regions known as the tundra biome. is covered with more than twice as much water as land. Only 3% of this water is fresh, meaning it contains a relatively small amount of dissolved minerals. Most of the fresh water is locked up in polar ice caps and glaciers or is stored down in the ground. Less than one hundredth of one percent of the Earth's water exists in rivers, streams, ponds and lakes, the freshwater biomes. The freshwater biome. Standing bodies of water, such as ponds and lakes, can be classified according to their nutrient content. Usually, the steadily moving mountain streams and rivers carry little sediment or nutrients and feed many lakes and ponds with cool, clear, oxygen rich water. As a result, fish, such as trout, often dwell in these clear, oxygen rich environments along with some algae growth. On the other hand, there are lakes and ponds that are fed with water containing large quantities of sediments and high concentrations of nutrients. These environments are less clear and encourage dense blooms of algae. As the algae die off, bacteria and other decomposers break down the dying algae, while at the same time reducing much of the water's valuable dissolved oxygen. These murky environments are often populated with fish, such as catfish and bass, which survive well in oxygen-depleted bodies of water and are all part of the dynamic freshwater biome. The Marine Biome Ocean waters cover 71% of the Earth's surface. The depths of the ocean range from the intertidal zone, the coastal land that is daily covered and uncovered by seawater, to the deepest ocean depth of about 33,000 feet, or 10,000 meters. There 
There are five major types of ocean biomes. Coastal waters, near shore zone, coral reefs, open ocean, and vent communities. The coastal waters are usually shallow enough to allow sunlight to reach a variety of forms of algae. Coastal rivers also supply many nutrients to the abundant and diverse life in this intertidal zone. Because of the rising and falling of the tides, plant and animal life such as scallops, crabs, barnacles, and sea anemones must survive the exposures to both air and water. The near shore zone lies beyond the intertidal zone and is more stable since there is no direct exposure to air. Organisms in this zone are strictly aquatic. Kelp plants protect and nourish the abundant life in these shallow waters. Coral reefs are often found in warm tropical waters. The reefs are formed from the skeletons of the various species of coral, sponges, sea anemones, and hundreds of species of fish add a variety of color to this diverse community of plants and animals. The open ocean is populated by different species of microscopic plant organisms such as phytoplankton, which are consumed by the microscopic animals called zooplankton, which are consumed by various species of fish and sea mammals such as whales. Vent communities lie in the great depths of the abyssal zone where there is no light. For the most part, this zone is cold and barren. Without sunlight to provide an energy source, it was thought that very few life forms could survive. However, there are openings in the earth that look like small volcanoes called vents that provide heat and nutrients to strange clusters of tube worms, white crabs and clams, creatures of the wondrous world of the marine biome. Washington Carver wrote, Never a day passes but that I do myself the honor to commune with some of nature's varied forms. By discovering and learning more about your biome, you discover that you too are part of the biome and belong to the community of life. Please answer the following questions. Number one, geographical areas filled with a major community of plants and animals are known as what? Number two, what type of trees must lose their leaves in autumn so to prevent water loss during frozen winters? Number three, name the biome that has nutrient-rich soil and is most often used for agriculture is often identified as the breadbasket of the world. Number four, what type of trees are able to keep their leaves all year and survive cold snowy winters? Number five, why are there no trees in the tundra? Number six, where does less than one one hundredth of one percent of the Earth's fresh water exist? 
Number 7. Name two of the five types of ocean biomes presented in this program. Please answer the following statements true or false. Number 8. In some parts of the world, the chaparral biome is best represented by evergreen shrubs that are able to survive the destructive forces of floods. Number 9. Reptiles, mammals, and a huge variety of insects compete fiercely in rainforest for nutrients. Number 10. To survive the hot daytime periods in the desert, some animals burrow in the cool ground.